We marked the layout directly on the top plate, then brought the trusses in. Am I moving along the back wall and nailing these with you? Oh, I think I can do this with you just staying down there. Okay. We will find out. Do you want me to set a bunch, couple of nails in across the back? You know what, just for now, go up on the ladder and hold this. As we install the trusses, we use a long piece of one by with the two foot on center layout marked on it. Then we nail it to the gable end and use it to hold and space each truss in place. Right there. Good. For now, we secure the trusses by toe nailing them in place. Later, we'll add hurricane clips to satisfy our local code. Yep, I'll wait for you to get in. Let's put it in position. It's got to go down. Yep, up. Oh. We keep the gable end truss flush with the framing to ensure the sheathing remains in plane. All right. Okay, we got the roof trusses up. We just have to do some adjusting here and there, take some measurements, make sure they're nice and plumb. Then we're going to put the roof sheathing down. To ensure that the roof sheathing splits on a truss, measure back from the rake trim to the center of the top core. Also, remember to stagger the seams as you did with the floor framing. I can spin it around. You want spinning around? No, I can spin it around if I, if I have to. Got it. The roof sheathing we are using for this project has a tongue and groove system that keeps the edges aligned without the need for roof or H clips. How will those designers ever know how to brace the gable if we don't show them how to do it now? Right. Nail this down to the floor once we get it in position. Let's over, uh, overkill it. It's got to go more. Uh-huh. All right. Now we got to get serious here. Is that working? It is. Oh, hold on. That looks sweet. Unlike the floor, adhesive is not necessary for the roof sheathing. Ooh. You guys are making me nervous. <laughs> 